Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be going through the entry level pilot pens in my collection. I've gone through nearly all of these, I believe, except for this one uh, in previous videos before. So I'm not going to go into details in, in terms of length and things like that. Although we, we can actually do a, like a visual comparison of each pen's um, length and so on. But I'm going to be going through what are your options if you are getting into fountain pens. And um, you kind of look through all of the choices out there. Um, things like the Lamy Safari, uh, offerings from Platinum, offerings from Sailor, and you kind of came to the conclusion that Pilot was the way to go. Right, whether or not Pilot is the way to go in terms of entry fountain pens is another question entirely and we're not going to get into that in today's video. We're just going to go through all of these pens and I'll give you my thoughts. So <clears throat> starting from the left, you have the Petite um, 1. And <clears throat> to be absolutely honest, so apologies for my voice. I've, uh, I actually happen to have COVID at the day that I'm filming this. Um, so basically the Petite One is pretty unique pen. It's out of all these pens down here, it's, it's positioned as probably the most beginner pen that you could get. Uh, if I remember correctly in Singapore, you can get this for about $2.50. And the cheap, only one pen in the Pilot lineup, um, fountain pen lineup is cheaper than this, and that's the, the V Master, I believe. And that's like $1.50, something like that. So I'm not saying um, that even though this is a very beginner pen, it's, it's actually not a bad pen, right? It's, uh, and it suits a, a purpose in my collection. For one, like I mentioned, it's a pocket pen, for two, when you hold it, it probably has the best section out of all these pens listed down here, where you've, you're given a very generous size section and it feels comfortable when writing. And when posted, it's actually a very, very good length. Um, drawback to the petite one would be the kind of non-standard converter size. So I mean, uh, if it supported something like a Con 40, uh, it will be way you know higher up in the list. And I guess the other thing about the Petite One, it's it's a uh, it's positioned very clearly in Pilot's lineup. I, in my mind, at least, as a very uh, perhaps a children's pen, and it um, it goes by the looks uh, that that probably it is. Um, by the way, all the all of these other pens have the standard Pilot steel nib. Um, this one is not the standard Pilot steel nib. It's actually a kind of a different variant with kind of wider shoulders. However, I have not found that it writes any worse or much worse than these down here. <clears throat> so that's a petite one. And we'll probably put it out of the way because it's, it is what it is. The next pen, which I want to speak briefly about, is actually a pen which I've not featured before on the channel, and that's the Plumix. Um, mine happens to be the calligraphy version with the medium uh, stub kind of a way. However, the body of the Plumix is pretty similar to another pilot pen called the Penmanship. And that one normally comes with a fine, a fine or, or medium nib. Not not hundred percent sure. Pretty sure it comes with a fine nib. Um, so my thoughts about the Plumix. Um, if if you're interested, I can feature this pen in another video. But my thoughts about it is it's it's positioned as a calligraphy pen. Uh, it comes with a triangle grip, which I personally I. Do not mind, but it's not my favorite. 
the triangle grip, as you can see, the sections actually have cutouts like this to force your hand to be in a certain position when riding. You can twist the nib a little bit to, to alter the position if you want. But um, so it comes with a triangle grip. Uh, it's a very long pen, right? So it, it has, it reminds me of, um, you know, one of those dip pens uh, or calligraphy pens where it's very long. And that's nice. The other thing about the, the Plumix is it, you know, it, it, it just doesn't feel it doesn't feel like a pen that you use every day. I mean, you wouldn't pull this out from your notebook and then start writing with it. It's probably a desk pen, is my guess. Um, it, don't get me wrong, it is a good pen, but uh, I, I probably would put it in a different class altogether. If the petite one was positioned as a pocket pen or children's or introductory pen by Pilot, this would be very clearly a desk pen or a or very purpose specific pen uh, depending on the nib you choose. Like in this one, for the stub, it's very clearly like an art or calligraphy pen. So I'll put the Plumix to the side and we'll concentrate on these four pens for the remainder of the, of the video. First of all, there are these two pens in the middle are kind of uh, related in a way. So this one is the 78G. Um, you can still get this as the 78G Plus and uh, it's still available. If I'm not wrong, this pen can be can be obtained at least here in Singapore for about the $25, $26 mark. And why do I say this pen is related to this one, which is actually the Cocoon, uh, but it's it's also known in the Western world as the Metropolitan or the MR2, MR series pens, is that the two sections are the same. So if you look at it very closely, you know, the, the one on, on the left, sorry, is the, the Metropolitan or slash Cocoon. The one on the right is the 78G and essentially they are the same section. Um, we'll talk about the nibs later on, but you can actually take the 78G nib unit, I mean the whole section essentially, with the converter and plug this into the Metropolitan and use it just like that, right? So, and vice versa for the, for the 78G. So, you probably can see where the, where the Metropolitan came from. They essentially took the 78G, uh, put on a more robust body, which is this very nice brass body and made it a new pen. And it's, a, it's a, probably all the better for it, right? However, that's not to say that the 78G wasn't a bad, was a bad design in the first place because it has a couple of advantages to the Metropolitan slash Cocoon. First, namely, is the fact that it has a screw-on cap. Um, my experience is there really is not that much difference in terms of like a snap-on cap um, to a screw-on cap. Um, my preference is, besides the ease of deployment, you can actually open up the uh, snap-on cap very easily. But my general preference, and why do I say it's an advantage for the 78G, is, is for screw-on cap, just because of the security and the, I just happen to like a screw-on cap. <clears throat> and in terms of the, the overall feel of the 78G, especially when posted, it's, it feels better to me in the hand, right? I mean, the, for the for the cocoon or the metropolitan, I mean, there's really nothing wrong with it in the hand. Um, in fact, I like the feeling of the weight at the back of the pen since this is a metal pen. Uh, this pen is to me is is at its best when it's unposted, 
which, which is actually the way I like it. Um, 78G is at its best um, because it's a pretty short pen when posted. And to me, I think that those are the, the big differences besides things like the material um, and so on. Then obviously, the Metropolitan or Cocoon is actually longer when unposted as well. <coughs> Apologies for that. <coughs> and that brings me on to the last two pens, which is uh, the Kakuno. And the Kakuno and the, the Explorer, right? The Kakuno actually is pretty interesting pen. Um, it's interesting because it 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 has a section which is not um, like this one, where it's smooth like, like this one as well, right? Where, whereby it actually still has a tripod-like uh, section down here, but it's not as pronounced of a section as com compared to the Plumix, right? And, you know, I think it's a kind of a, com a pen which is has a bit of compromise in terms of Pilot knew that if they made this pen too much of a tripod grip, it would feel too beginner-like. So it's like halfway between a real a real tripod grip and an, um, just to give people a, a feeling of a, of a, this being not such a beginner pen, like I said. The other thing about the, the these two pens is these two pens are I mean, the rest of the pens are as well, but these two pens are very, very light, right? Um, the Explorer comes with, I believe it's called the Con B, uh, could be wrong, converter, which it's metal, parts of it are metal, um, but it's actually a very light converter. The Kikuno actually just comes with a cartridge. However, <coughs> I mean, the same thing applies for the, for the Explorer. These two pens are, can actually take Pilot's Con 70, and this is my um, Custom Heritage 912, also by Pilot. And I'm just going to carefully take out, uh, just to show you that um, you, know, you can actually just fit uh, Con 70 onto into the Kakuno. And in actual fact, if you can manage to source a Con 70, by the way, a Con 70, it's about, you probably can get it for about that $15 mark um, here in Singapore. By adding the Con 70 to either the Explorer or the Kakuno, the feel of the pen is, is actually improved tremendously. At least in my opinion, that's my opinion that um, this weight of the Con 70 actually makes the pen way more usable compared to using like a, like a cartridge or even, even like a very light converter like a Con 40. So that's my recommendation, and that's the advantage to these two pens. Uh, in terms of in terms of the design of these two pens, I mean these three, four pens, sorry. Uh, and I've just put the, put them side by. <coughs> Apologies for that. I'll just put them side by side like this. In terms of all these pens down here, I would say that. The section for the Metropolitan slash Cocoon and also the 78G to me feels it's it's decent, but it's a bit slim, right? If you were like, um, you know, you had smaller hands and you didn't really mind the slimmer section, these two pens would feel good. I haven't really, I think I've measured this before, the, the section for the Explorer is slightly thicker and to be very honest, out of all of these pens, the Explorer is actually the 
it's actually the most expensive pen um, at about probably about the 28 30 dollar mark and it probably feels the best especially if you put a con 70 in there um, Kukuno is not too far away um, however you just have to get used to this tripod grip so that's enough of me talking about and rambling about the pens I just w wanted to show you um, coincidentally all of these pens also have uh, different nib sizes so I just wanted to show you how the different nib sizes performed in a short writing sample so we'll start with um, we'll start with the extra fine right so this is the extra fine in the Kukuno I'll show you what what it will look like And in terms of the, the line and the feel of the nib, it's very consistent across all of the pilot nibs where they are perfectly fine for, um, for everyday writing in terms of script. Right? Or, or even uh, for cursive, right? However, this being... Um, fountain pen after all I would recommend that if you get any of these fountain pens that it's it's probably best for cursive rather than for script we'll switch to the um, cocoon I'm not sure whether it's it's this particular nib. Um, it's noticeably noticeably smoother than the Kukuno's extra fine. So this is actually the the fine. And I would say that the the fine is very very uh, since it's so much smoother. It's actually okay to write with it. Um, in script or even in cursive, right? So it's a very all-purpose nib. Um, this fine from from Pilot. I mean, the the standard steel fine. We'll switch to the medium. And this pen is kind of drying out a little bit, as you can tell, because I've left it uncapped for a while. By the way, the ink I'm using is, is blue-black. Um, I think the Kukuno might, might have the Pilot uh, sorry, the standard Pilot Blue Black. Um, generally, they're using shades of Blue Black down here. So it's the medium. I mean, there's a reason why the Pilot medium is is loved by so many people. I mean, it's it feels soft for some reason, right? It even though the the nib itself is not soft. Right, but it it's soft enough that it feels it's it kind of feels like it's gliding over the paper in a way, right? So it's a very nice nib if you if you like mediums um, and you like that very gliding feeling when writing across paper. Again, it works well both for script as well as for cursive. And then the last. Um, 
the last nib that you probably can easily get for the Pilot Steel series is actually the, the stub. And I believe it's the official name is stub medium, could be wrong. And the width is roughly, I would guess, 1.1 millimeters. And it's this very smooth stub, right? And this is the nib of choice if you want to get some line variation. For example, as you can tell, So, <clears throat> apologies again for my voice today. You can give it, get an idea of all these pens which I've featured today. The, the Extra Fine by the Kakuno, uh, like I mentioned, probably optimized for cursive. The Fine from the Cocoon. And incidentally, sorry, before I uh, finish with that last point, all of the nibs can be interchanged very easily between all those pens. Uh, the medium by the Explorer, and last but not least, uh, the medium stub from the 78G. So, um, I've just passed the 1,000 subscriber mark on my channel. It's, uh, it's been an amazing one and a half years. Really appreciate all of you for sticking with me over this time. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, like I said, not the, be not the ideal experience because my of my voice um, and I hope you learned something you know I really appreciate the comments and the questions I get from um, from all of you so keep them coming and I will see you in the next video take care bye bye